With us now is Neil Curtis, and Neil Curtis wrote a book. It's No God, question mark, No God. Uh, and it's N-O, God, question mark, and then K-N-O-W, God. So Neil Curtis, welcome to the show. Well, thank you. So tell us about your book. What? How, how did you get this book? It's cute, by the way. Oh, well, thank you. I um, actually, uh, when I started to write this book, we, I was in the midst of writing a screenplay um, because I wanted to know what I needed to do to make a movie out of all the uh, extraordinary things that were happening to me. And the person said, okay, well, you need to go out and write this screenplay. And as I started writing a screenplay, I realized that I was ultimately writing a book. And I said, you know what, it's probably much easier for me to um, get this information across through a book than to actually go and wait for someone to actually pick it up as a movie. So that's how it all began, and that's what um, that's how it, that's how the book actually started. Now, is in your opinion, the book a proof that there is a God based upon your own spiritual experiences? There's absolutely okay. the book uh, does take people out of uh, the belief and faith mode, and it puts you into an actual knowing mode. So you actually, you know, leave words like faith and belief, which kind of have doubt within them. You know, if you hear like certain uh, times when people say, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed or something like that, you just means- a mountain. Right, right, just means that you could have a very small amount of faith or you can have a large amount of faith, but it's not, it's kind of, so the space within, between the small amount and the large amount is what we call doubt. And I kind of remove doubt from God. And so when you actually get in touch with God, you won't have any more doubts about God because you'll actually feel and know that you're speaking to someone just the same way I'm speaking to you right here. Now, when you started this project, mm -hmm. uh, what did people say? Did you tell anybody or were, were you kind of keeping it kind of on the low, low key? Kind of? Well, ultimately, uh, no, first, first off, when I first started the project, um, it was very private. I didn't really let anyone know what I was actually doing. Um, and people that I did tell about it kind of thought that that was the way that they saw me going in life anyway. They just kind of figured that I'd end up doing something along those lines. Because um, throughout my life, I continually uh, would stress that, you know, God is important. And, you know, if, if, if we don't know the answers, then the big man should know exactly what we should be doing. And if we reach out to that, we should be in touch with something and we'll be ultimately in the right direction. So when you were seeking answers about your life, mm -hmm. um, I guess you prayed or whatever word you want to use for that. You mm -hmm. just kind of asked the universe, mm -hmm. asked above, said, hey, you know what, am I doing the right thing? Or how can I find the solution to something? And then things started happening for you? Well, I'll tell you, uh, at a very early age, I had uh, experiences that confirmed that God was present. Um, I just didn't know how to channel the energy correctly. So um, I started to look for different signs and guidance and things that wouldn't make a whole lot of sense to most people who were making a whole lot of sense to me, you know, and I just started following that direction and God started to manifest himself. So I started to get more information and it started to become more profound as time went on. And um, ultimately, I, 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 get, I got to know God uh, on a, on a, on a, on a, on a, I don't want to say first name basis, but you know, I, I have a connection. <laughs> and when you have that connection, you know God is present. You know that anything that you ask for, you will receive at that point. You know, and it's important that as we go through the day or through the months or the years that we continually give God thanks for the things that we uh, are accomplishing and I doing. I think that's fabulous. You know, I was saying before, my show's not really religious. Mm -hmm. I would say it bends on spiritual mm -hmm. um, because I myself growing up uh, had certain gifts or had certain signs and I always say things all the time. I mean, I was voted most optimistic of my senior class, wow. and I have a show called Live It Up, you know? That's right. I'm just kind of this way. And it was hard for people, I think, to really accept me for being that overtly bubbly, positive person all the time. They didn't think it was real. They always think that I'm trying to put on an act. But how in the world could I ever do that 24-7? So did you find yourself realizing that, too, that this was your focus? This was it for you? 
Well, I, 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 I got to tell you that I, I'm that same person that you just explained, very optimistic. Everything is positive. There's really no negatives. And anything that happens, happens for a reason. And, you know, just, the, just making life go along without getting caught up in the, in the what have yous or what if or how come or asking too many questions about life, but allowing life to happen. I call it gratitude and acceptance. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm grateful. I accept the things I can't change. I have the wisdom to know the difference. You know that saying, right? Correct. And you just move it on. Now, so what you decided to do is to be bold and to actually put it in print. I put it in print. And the reason why I did it is because I was directed by God. Or I'm not going to say directed. I was actually put on, on the stand, <laughs> if, you'd, if you'd call it that. And I was basically asked, well, now that you know this information, what will you do? Mm. So I asked the question, which was, God, if everything that I am telling people is true about you, confirm it to me so that I know that I'm saying the right things to people. And that same night, it was, it was very, very profound. Again, like I say, it, 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 and it drove me to write this book, it was when it happened, it, in that same night, I was revealed that I am God, you got to know me now, and now that you know me, what are you going to do? Hmm. And that's why I'm here, and that's why I'm here. And, and my job right now is to unite nations through one common denominator, which is God, our creator. And it has nothing to do with religion. It has nothing to do with whether you are Jew, uh, Jewish or Muslim or Christian or Baptist. It doesn't make a difference. The key is that we all need to have our own relationship with our creator. And when you actually have that relationship, you will become empowered. Empowered to do what? Empowered to control your future and our world, which right now is out of control. It is a little messy. That is correct. I, I have to agree. Uh, I recently did a story. My friend Felice Cantatori wrote a book about Rocky Spirit. Mm -hmm. And there was a moment where he was taking a picture for the cover of his book. He didn't know it was the cover of his book. Mm -hmm. And there was the camera broke. And there was like this huge burst of light, this huge orb. Wow. And, he, you know, signs come to people in different ways, oh, yeah. whether it's a voice, a flash of light. Uh, for me, when I was little, it used to be constant deja vu. I thought I was a little Meshuggah. You know, so <laughs> I started writing my dreams down. And I was like, oh, that didn't really happen yet. Now it happened. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it doesn't happen all the time. But, like, when you are in tune you know, and you try to be good to your neighbor, just the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Mm -hmm. And you just try to live that every day. Life is so much more simpler, isn't it? It's just like you're in the flow and you just keep going. And the key is you know. You know there's certain things. Like I wake up in the morning, I know for a fact that there's certain things that won't happen to me because I know I'm protected. I know that I'm walking in that light, in that circle. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to tell you a, a quick story. I went on a plane to the Dominican Republic with a pastor. <clears throat> and the pastor uh, had said to me that he wanted, he said that everything that I was doing was maybe not along the right lines of religion. And I just told him that things are what they are and we need to be in touch with God. And he ultimately understood. So um, through our flight, we had some experiences up there while we were up in the air. He realized um, that God is God, and he kind of uh, understood it at the end of the day. It's, it's a beautiful thing. I'm happy for you that you had an awakening. I'm happy for you that you can celebrate your life and that you can use your messages for good. Mm -hmm. And uh, congratulations on taking the courage that it takes to step out like that. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, for more information on Neil Curtis, and about no God, question mark, no God, uh, you can reach him where? How can they find you? You can reach me at no God, N-O-G-O-D, K-N-O-W-G-O-D dot com. N-O-G-O-D, K-N-O-W-G-O-D dot com. And that'll basically uh, put you in touch with all my uh, contact information um, and everything regarding the book. Thank you so much. Well... This is another great segment on Live It Up. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. I hope it makes you think, maybe feel, and be moved, touched, and inspired to find your own answers in life. Um, that's why we're here. So thank you so much. There's more on Live It Up.